eh, y es, pol es polémico y ah, ya se está grabando. Bueno, voy a hacer la presentación y uh, Yes, uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, the session has been recorded and I'm going to start uh, presenting our, uh, our panelist. So thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, siesta time. So I think it's a huge effort and that means they are really, really interested in these admitting. And yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, today we are really excited uh, with our next panelist as she's not here, by the way. We started a while ago and we're now on the 17th, uh, sorry, the 15th. And um, I think, you know, as a good number and reflects uh, how much uh, we are interested in promoting our services and talking about different uh, topics that can be of interest of the general public. So thank you so much uh, to the Madrid Council for uh, promoting us and uh, assuring that this comes to true. Hi, Guillermo, how are you? Today we're going to talk about a topic that I think is really, really interesting. It's a bit polemical as well. And, you know, there's a different phrases around the same topic. We were talking about this yesterday. And in our participatory group, we are used to um chat with uh, the ones that are presenting the word that are um, within the group um and we normally kind of uh, talk about different topics not always legal topics but we do think that public participation and talking about legal topics kind of offer the tools to the participants and to our listeners to have the resources to kind of uh, cover and to kind of um, face the different difficulties that they might come across. And so today's session is more oriented, and more shift towards uh, the urban planning. Um, and we're going to try to use the words that we were using uh, the last few sessions. And we're going to focus as well on the public and the citizens' participation. We talked about development, institutions, organization. And, you know, even though it was a very complete session and uh, it was a perfect in terms of raining ideas and, and everything and so that uh, we kind of thought that the legal topic was missing. So we wanted to talk about how, what are the legal consequences, for example, on uh, planning up and drawing up uh, incorrect urban planning and how these can lead to legal consequences for citizens and general population. And that, that, that's what we're going to talk about today. So Esther, which is our expert today, she's going to carry out like a kind of analysis um, about what are the legal consequences or uh, drawing up a wrong urban hub planning. And as we already mentioned in our emails, we want to do an investigation, sorry, a research um, about what kind of a legal mechanism do the citizens have um, and what legal mechanisms do the population know in terms of urban planning. Because sometimes there are processes that are there that, you know, they don't um, encourage citizens to participate. And, you know, uh, we, we think that this legal framework um, can be, can change, can be different. Um, and that's uh, our main idea. We also want to 
break down all the legal processes that take part when you're doing or coming up with a urban planning. Why? Because it can be very difficult to understand by the general public. But once you know every single step that is involved, then we believe that citizens can be more involved and um, we want somehow to promote, to foster public participation. And um, when, when I talk about participation, I mean uh, the possibility or being a decision makers or the possibility of having access to making decision. Um, that's one part of the session. Then we have already done uh, other other sessions um, about human planning, about the legal stuff. And yeah, the our name participatory group might suggest that we're all for participation. And yes, we are all for participation of citizens and population. However, we have to look at participation in different angles. And that's what we wanted to today. We want to introduce you to different angles where you can promote and you can be a part of a the, the, the public administrations. Um, and then as we when we talk about cities and when we talk about you know being more sustainable and stuff like that it is difficult to come up with urban plans that fit and agree with everybody and that's the idea if you don't talk about it the real problem doesn't exist and i am so sorry because i know i'm being very verbose and i'm being and i know i'm just talking non-stop but i just wanted to to you know to to get my message across and we want to make sure as well we talk about the conflicts that exist in, within the legal departments and within the legal uh, representation that citizens can have in our cities and to be seconds because i'm going to see if marta is joining sorry Okay, I think Esther has joined and already. Esther, please go ahead. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, can you see me? No, we can hear you, but we cannot see you. So it doesn't seem your camera is working at all. Okay, it's a bit, uh, a bit strange because the camera normally works, but uh, yeah, I'm going to try again. Don't worry, Steve, we are fine. Thank you. Sorry, so following my speech and the, the things I want to talk about, so uh, Within our group, uh, there are different approaches that we want to take. Um, from the one hand, uh, we really want to come up with a method, with a system um, that works for everyone when it comes to drawing up a urban planning, a plan that works for the citizens, for the council, for the government, for the developers, and you know, bring the concept of sustainability a environment to the agenda and what are the consequences of doing this of making the urban planning such a big concept and making it a priority for the agenda for the politicians uh, we think that one of the most uh, terrible challenges at least in spain i'm not too sure if across latin america and caribbean countries it happens the same but uh, since the pandemic, the urban planning has just been going down and is non-existing. And it, it has a lot of flaws, not just in terms of 
uh, legal requirements, but also the the time that the council and the decision makers is set up to plan everything else. And today, you know, we are uh, wearing the uh, the judge's hat somehow. Um, but as I was saying, as I've been mentioning for the in the last ten minutes, it, we think that participation is key, and we are self-aware, and we know that participation is not the solution, is not the magic solution to every to every single problem that we have in Spain, at least. But being able to participate and to be a part of the human urban planning, it helps a lot and it helps us at least to have a better idea of our of what our citizens need. And uh, today's topic, and you will hear it from Esther, from Esther as well, we are going to talk about the legal uh, requirements, the legal approach the, the human planning needs to have. Um, so every single uh, human planning needs to follow a phase, needs to follow certain requirements. And even so, it is quite frustrating and annoying that it doesn't guarantee that the plan will go ahead. Um, and right now, it's, you know, it's a mess, it's a um, uh, ongoing discussion between experts, teachers, lecturers, uh, developers, and we are all trying to change the status quo of this urban planning. Um, from the Article 56 in Spain to the Article 49, and you might be joining us from other parts of Spain or Latin America, and maybe you don't know what kind of article I'm referring about, or you might have other issues, but I still believe that participation from your council, from your people, it is a, a good idea and is very important. And that is the idea, the general idea, the general overview that we're going to try to give you today. And I've been talking about it for 10, 15 minutes now. So, Esther, how are you going? How are you getting on? Okay, I'm okay, but I think I'm afraid my camera is still not working. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you, no problem at all. It's just your camera. But you cannot hear me. No, no, sorry. No, no, we can't see you. Um, I'm not too sure because we don't really don't tend to have these issues. Could you probably reset your laptop? Okay, I am really sorry because we are already behind the schedule. But do you think it's my issue or your issue? I'm not too sure, Stair, you might be able to use your laptop or your phone. Okay, what I'm going to do in the meantime is just going to try to use another laptop. Sorry. I am so sorry. I'm just going to log out and then log back in. Okay, that's fine. Don't worry. I have uh, been initiating the discussion. Yeah, yeah, I've been following you, Marta, and I think you've been great because it's a very huge topic. Okay, um, do you have the PowerPoint or the presentation? Yeah, but I can't, I can't share my screen anyway. Yeah, but maybe you can forward me the presentation via email and then I can uh, share it with you. Um, okay, before I do that, two be seconds, I'm going to try to, you know, make sure that the camera works. And then if, if not, then just I will send you. Okay, don't worry. Bye. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. My apologies. Well, no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Honestly, don't worry, because at least, Marta, we have the opportunity to listen to you, which is great, you know. 
No, no, I am sorry, I'm a bit nervous actually. But um, before STEM starts, um, especially those that are following us, uh, say, from us in America, um, I just wanted to say as well that we do have the general overview from the lecturer's point of view. And um, I'm not too sure because I'm talking from a Spanish point of view and maybe in Latin America, the participation or the average of people that participate um, is higher or maybe less. I'm not too sure. And, um, you know, still just trying to juggle everything and trying to make sure everybody has got a voice and we don't talk about only from Spain, we talk about from other communities too. And one of the topics eh, that we talked about is, well, sorry, a discussion, um, is eh, an ongoing discussion that is going on in Madrid that say, refers not to the legal procedure, but to the final product. Um, I've not heard much about it, but do you know, Jose Maria, how everything is going and uh, if the process is closed? Uh, yeah, so like the process has been closed. There was a lot of participation uh, by the citizens and um, there's been actually two processes going on, one called a POW and the other one called just normal procedures. And I can't remember the average of participants or the exact number, but basically it was a survey that went around in Madrid that was asking people about their future. Like what aspects would you improve in the future? Uh, what would you improve within the public services? Say, what do you think about the national utilities? What do you think about the NHS? What do you think about the human planning? You know, um, a lot of general questions that the public could answer. Um, and, you know, if the response was positive, then we were super happy to report this back to the council and to come up with our own analysis. And, uh, you know, it was interesting. It was a bit sort of interesting. It was interesting uh, overall. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, I just wanted to clarify that it was only within Madrid. Yeah, um, I think this is a very good exercise because it's a very good example of how citizens can participate and can be involved in society. Um, maybe the results show us something that could be really interesting in other areas of the council. Uh, and, you know, I think this establishes a future dynamic that can be used by council, state associations, and other people that want to know more about what the citizens think of their cities. And, you know, the other thing that I like to talk about is a, what the citizens think of their a own city because the reality is that our lives are changing our reality is changing we have different needs people have different thoughts and different mentalities and a, you know being able to participate in a survey like that for example gives the citizens the opportunity to feel more involved more included um esther how are you getting on I don't think she's in the meeting. Um, I wanted to know in the meantime, do we have any specific results of the survey and the people that are participating in the POW? Um, 
produce más o menos bienestar a la población. And if you think that the, the citizens think that this project contributes to their well-being, to be fair, is, I don't know, because there are specific questions related to legal procedures, other questions were more related to the well-being, others were more related to their time. But let me find the answers. Uh, sorry, some of the questions. The questions were related to how do you, uh, what do you think would contribute to your well-being within your community? How do you use the green spaces across and around your community? Do you think there are a uh, citizens, sorry, there are cities barriers that stop you from using green spaces? Do you think your city contributes to your own well-being? And then there was other questions like you could say uh, select in the map those areas that in Madrid that you think they are more uh, deprived. And then, you know, it was a quick survey because it only take a 15 minutes and then it would just close. Uh, so, um, um, the questions would just um, uh, be referring to the well-being with uh, yourself, your environment, your community, urban planning, and then there was questions that were not related to this at all. And there was a bit of everything. There was a mix, uh, to be fair. There was people that really agreed. Uh, there was people that didn't agree at all. Um, and then, you know, as we said from the beginning, we we're just talking about Madrid, but then we won this uh, tool and this survey to serve as a precedent for next uh, future surveys. and. You know, the analysis could be used uh, for different uh, councils and across different countries. And then, yeah, yeah, I, that, that, that's, that's why, um, that's what we've done. And then uh, there are other things involved, uh, by the way. Uh, there have different questions uh, around. But I don't know if you want me to read the questions eh, or if you want me to to keep going or what do you want me to do? Eh, thank you, thank you. You know, I'm like a sponge. Every response you give me, I just absorb it and then I like, come up with other three answers. And, you know, we could be here forever. So thank you. Esther is here, so I'm just going to give it the floor to Esther. Thank you, I'm all well, thank you. Sorry, sorry for this incident. And as always happens, the technology, it happens like that. When you need to work it, it doesn't. I'm going to introduce you so you can relax and you can settle down. Because I know that when these things happen, you get really anxious about it. And in the end, you are not even connecting because you are not thinking properly. And now that we have Delight here from Malaga and everything is working properly and I can see you with the pink background, you will be more beautiful indeed. So I want to introduce you Esther Rando Burgos. She's an administrative law professor at Malaga's university. And besides being administrative law professor, she's specialized in general urban planning and I share with her uh, an investigation program about the supra-municipality, meaning a governmental level higher than the municipal government. And here we are seeing the keys of what we are going to talk today about how the regulations about the urban planning is linked to the at the municipal level or at the admin, local administration and how this responds to specific moments and how the reality has overpassed these situations. And this reality creates mechanisms that are different or 
besides these regulations that are trying to absorb, for instance, all the coastline in, in the north of Spain. So in this situation of the actual reality of the own norms and regulations, something that we are going to talk today is the public participation and urban planning from a different participation or point of view, meaning what are the consequences, the legal consequences that Esther is going to explain us and how it affects the absence of these participations. And I know that it sounds like I'm a mom and I'm trying to tell you off, but it's a reality. And it is true that sometimes the own local and communities need to be aware of these to say that the rules and the game is changing and it's not only about creating and building streets, it's something more complex and it is weaken our system, but at the same time it's richer. So there is a transformation of our reality and is changing the design of the houses, the dimension of the uh, our society, about the economic and social and environmental uh, regulation. So we have to take all, in, all this into account. And again, thank you so much, Esther. Sorry for the rush. And so now that we are ready to go, we'll be listening to you. And as it's the first time that you are here in one of those workshops, you can see that uh, we are kind of the same normally, but today we are a big group. I think it's because it's a rich debate. And if you want to talk, please feel free to raise your hand. You can also text some something in the chat if you have any questions. Luis is always keeping an eye on it. You can also tell me. And if there is a question in the chat, we will ask you. And so you can also pause and keep going with the presentation when needed. So that's why we are here today. We need to cooperate and learn all together. And I let you the floor and thank you so much once again, Esther. Thank you so much, Marta. It is a pleasure for me, as Luis was saying before, to listen to Marta, given the delay that I couldn't connect, I, I miss a bit, but it is always a pleasure to, to listen to her and learn from her. Once again, apologies, and thank you so much to everyone that is here today, to the Town Hall of Madrid, to open the floor to this initiative, and of course, to Marta Alore, She's a referent for me in the administrative law. She's a professional and excellent lawyer. And foremost, he, she's got a human quality, which is brilliant. And thank you so much to all that gave me the opportunity to be here. I really feel lucky to share these moments with her too. And without further ado, because we could be here talking and talking for hours, because as you mentioned before, it is a huge uh, debate, but so much needed. And the reality is saying itself that we need a change. And we're, what we are here to discuss here is the public participation, as the title itself says. And in the context of the urban planning, what are the problems that we can find in this area? And to try to learn firsthand the uh, importance of the participation of the citizens. And now to give you a little bit of a background, I would like to highlight 
in general, what it means, the uh, citizen participation, and what's its relevancy, so we can focus in the main point of the conference. The public citizen uh, participation, it is something crucial for the democracy and for the laws and in our legal market here in Spain. There are so many regulations that refer to this right in that sense. And that slowly have been taking more importance over years and we are articulating slowly more mechanism to implement those regulations. We need to go back to 2001 when the European Commission established new regulations trying to uh, put on the table new ideas in relation to the governance trying to have a more democratic governance based in five different principles. And one of those five principles is the participation of the citizens together with the coherence amongst other. And here is also uh, crucial, the quality and how efficient we are, which means that we require an a big participation of the citizens There's the since the very beginning up until the end of the project. That should uh, create and generate more uh, trust in the citizens and in the um, policymakers. In fact, back from the 18th, together with the traditional regulations and traditional democracy, new regulations were established and this uh, participatory democra democracy was established since 2008 with that article 23 in the Spanish democracy, the uh, constitution. And here we know it as a uh, political democracy. So here, within the European context, based on the trust of the Constitution and the different regulations, we have seen a hinder in the process. But now, it is recognized the right of the of the citizens to be represented and how the representative democracy it is the basis of our society and we need to advance in that sense with the governments This is something that we are seeing right now, but in the, in the conference in the future of Europe, we see how these uh, rights were boasted, how they are implemented with different systems, maybe with different panelists, with different regulations to boost the participation of the citizens everywhere of in the European Union in a general view, as we would be all together, the education, the employment, and so many other different aspects. So in that moment, different presentations were articulated, different systems. And from that moment, there were two conferences, one about the future of Europe. So they were talking about those panels for the citizens in January 2022, and also um, some recommendations for the uh, Europe from to Europe in 2022. 
If we are talking about the legal system here with the Constitution, we can see how the participation of the citizen it is uh, there to try to facilitate the participation to all the citizens in the public life, cultural life, economic and social life. So with that regulation, we could see a, a tip of what was coming after to try to englobe and ask to all the citizens to participate at all those levels that I mentioned before. If we are focusing on this, we might say that this is the Article 23 and 25 that are consolidating, consolidating an active participation from the uh, citizens. Again, this is in the Spanish Constitution. From that general context, if we go to uh, at a practical level, and ha as Marta mentioned before, we really need to differentiate the participation of the citizens with the public information that we have related to the urban planning. We have seen that in the urban planning, it has been like just a, a, a process as an information, public uh, information to have some power, the citizens to uh, complement and to boost uh, these participation channels in, a, in an effective way. In this way, the citizens become part of this process when they participate actively creating those uh, plannings, the governance, the transparencies, taking some decisions, the active value that the citizens represents, it is unavailable. And we need to put this into value. And from now on, some regulations related to the urban planning are putting this into words. And we have seen these chains in this last year using a specific mechanism in an effective way with a specific regulations and with a specific cities, uh, models of villages or areas. But something that we shouldn't do is uh, get confused about these terms of having the information or the active participation. The first one is something mandatory and it's not something that it has not relevance. We are talking about something that is essential for the life of the citizens, it has a big impact. And in a legal framework, we have um, the traditional regulations related to the urban planning, but now we have seen how they are trying to include the participation of the citizens. We need to understand that these laws are thinking before or contemplating before the public administration. But are the administrations itself, like we can see in the Article 80, 83 of the Spanish Constitution, the ones that need to contemplate these? So in this way, any citizen that wants to um, check and see what happens or get informed should be able to do it. As I said before, in a general way, if we go to the uh, Article 83, it is something only optional. However, in new regulations are doing some mandatory regulations for a specific proceedings. 
And this is what happens in urban planning. When we are talking about urban planning, at a local level, the different uh, local governments have their own rights and their own um, policy making in, in the process. As Marta was saying before, it is crucial since we cannot forget that the urban planning are exhibition or expositions in, as in a general view. And any flaw that we can see in, in these regulation have the same consequences, the same legal consequences. If we are talking about urban planning or special planning, and they have the same legal consequences, as I was saying. And as someone highlighted before, is one of the controversies that we've been talking about through years now in administrative law and in the urban areas, because it has really negative consequences. Perdona que te interrumpa un momentito, porque quería, eh, eh, en este, eh, este panorama... Eh, Sorry to interrupt you for a minute, Esther, because I wanted to, to say something. Gerardo was uh, here writing something in the, in the chat. And this group is or like a traineeship group, and we are comparing constantly what is happening to us and all these things that you are mentioning that are so clear for me, maybe they are not so clear in other aspects. And that's what Gerardo was saying from the path municipality. And he mentioned that in their city, they intervene in the planification of the projects to improve the neighborhoods uh, that are located at the outskirts of the cities and the citizens participate with their demands and requirements. So they have uh, really positive results in that sense. And also we have Virginia. She was saying that in Bolivia, they have also some uh, participation regulation for the citizens related to public politi politics so the participation of the uh, munis at the municipality level is a huge part of the sustainability and uh, the inter interventions of the uh, policy makers. And as you have seen, the uh, legal model of regulation that it started to uh, put on the table, it is something that is completely regulated and it takes into account the participation of the citizens for the urban planning at the very first step. So it's just participation. There is no a dialogue here with that. There is no intervention and there is not real capacities for transformation. And I have a question related to that that I wanted to do uh, to ask to Esther and the colleagues from Bolivia. And I think it's the key in these urban planning processes, like when does it happen? At what moment should we see this process? We have seen some uh, participatory process that we mentioned before, and sometimes it happens after the project is done. But I was wondering if the regulation and if the laws that approve this urban planning establish the moment that we need to establish the participation, the citizen participation, because in here in our group, we talk about it for hours. We think it is crucial because if we uh, put this on the table, but the decision is already taken, then it is not worth it. But sometimes the regulation is not clear about when do we have to ask 
and the citizens. And in that sense, as Esther was mentioning, here in Spain we have been improving, but I wanted to check if the ones that are here, you wanted to say something about it, especially about the citizen participation in the city. Because as you know, is that the problem of the urbanism is that once it is done, it is really difficult to go backwards. And we have seen, for instance, in France, in some neighborhoods that they created a long time ago, they had been really bad. And now they are demolishing now because it is public soil. And given that it is public soil, it can be done. But that's another of the key points of this topic. When it should be done this process? Or when should be when when should we start with the public participation? I don't want to force you to speak, but if you're here and if you want to say something, please go ahead. It doesn't seem like nobody wants to talk. Yes, I've seen that Ronald mentioned something that they develop uh, in simultaneously the, the urban planning, and those are the basis for the uh, future planning together with the technical part of the planning. And this happens in La Paz, in Bolivia. So as it is simultaneously, the participatory process, we can put together the result to uh, formulate the final urban planning. And that's something that we also need to talk about, the technical aspects uh, in the urban planning. This also happened in Plaza de España without uh, those processes, uh, we need to think about if it if it is legally binding or not. And Susana, who is here too, uh, she knows a lot about it too, because in the end, it's also a public decision. And uh, so this can help us to and guide us to keep up with the process or not. And so Esther, I give you back the floor so you could catch up some air and now you can continue. No, thank you, Marta, for these interesting um, points that you mentioned. Yes, and this was also considered in the at a municipality level in 2022, and they consider three months more or less for the participatory process, and it was a formulation of a, a 15 days plan. This is really interesting, and today I can uh, take out many interesting points because we have seen this and it changes from one place to another. And we have seen that in some other places that implemented other measures and in the end they were not successful. But if it was successful in this case, thank you so much. It is an interesting input. We can continue now. Yes, absolutely. I understand this is fantastic to have all these different point of views because here in, in the law, it's really different for each country and it is uh, really enriching. And before we were talking that we were going to talk about the participatory process, as, Anna, as I said before, the public information and the public participation is completely different. And one is the manifestation of the participation of the citizens, but it's not the same. And each urban legislation has different ones. 
And as Marta said before, when should we do this? When happens? When they do allow the citizens to participate once the plan is already done. So it is just one of the processes at the end. And before, they were also talking about the duration of the process. And sometimes it, it changes from one uh, community to another. In some communities, it might be one month, in other two, in other it might be two days. So the deadlines are really different from one place to another. And as I said before, this is really mandatory when we are talking about public information. Right now, we'll, we'll pass to the uh, citizen participation, but this is just the information. And as I said, the planning is already done. And we have seen that by experience that they are not modify many things. Uh, yeah, we just need to highlight that this is a kind of a procedure. And for example, if a, we miss or we kind of overlook uh, one of the allocations, um, then there is a gap in, within the information. And how many allocations are you going to present to the court in your whole life? Um, but if we miss out and then we or we overlook at any of the allocations, then we do have a problem because the citizens are not getting the whole information. And uh, for example, just talking about here in the coastal of Seoul, we uh, had a huge, massive, controversial issue here in Malaga when uh, they wanted to control then uh, Marbella, Stepona, Malaga center. Uh, so we have a planning that's going to be approved in 2000 that went through 2006 but it's not until 2015 so a gap of 10 years there's a court that comes back to us and says no sorry mm, your planning is not valid anymore and uh, what happens next then um, basically we we have a, a no full fledged uh within our hands that we need to redo we need to rethink and and it, it was very frustrating because basically we had to present the whole documents again they were the same documents we had to do the same and it's not very easy to be fair because yeah we had to do basically everything, but when we did it back in 2006, the rules were ones, and then when we had to do it again back in 2015, the rules were other ones. So, um, and you know, when we talk about uh, hearings, I like to talk about votes, particular votes. Uh, some of the people that uh, draw their allocations. They, they just thought it, they just say, okay, I want to allocate, I want to appeal. And then the court uh, believes that somehow their right has been uh, overlooked at, and then we have to do everything again. And, you know, this is not a joke. This is not a cute story. This is not an anecdote. It's a, ma it's a fact of we've been working for over 10 years to get this or hope urban planning draw up and all set up and then the court comes back to and says you know what no you can't do it it's no and when i talk to my students about this i always say look you have to know the rules of the game and what are the rules of the game the procedures because if you don't follow the procedures if you don't follow the rules then you have massive huge legal consequences and then it ends up in allocations and the court takes forever to come back to you and say your allegation has been no your allegation cannot be flagged and this is real frustrating and can destroy years and years of work 
and you never know it could be from one reason for another reason you never know but you know the result is that is what it is and uh, you know what's more frustrating is uh, when the court come back to us with the result the resolution of the case we don't know the reason why and when we look at the proposal we compare it to the model that we have to follow and it is compatible it follows the procedure but still as new and we don't know i think it's a matter of the court not looking at what the status procedures are uh, and just generalizing absolutely everything and when the another issue is when you're presenting a plan like say today uh, 14th of june 2023 you draw up a proposal on a plan with the city that you have but maybe when it gets to the court and when it gets to the legal stuff uh, the city has changed and what are they going to think that your plan is not valid that your plan is due so that's one thing that I wanted to, to get across. That, that's one thing that I wanted to tell you about. And now we're going to talk about participation. So how do we go around the participation? We have to come up with a plan. Because people, when well, you're talking about cities, people, they think about their cities, the opportunities, the public transport, the national utilities that the city has, everything that the city has. So that's their model, that's their perspective. So you need their participation, you need their point of view in order to come up with a, a urban plan. Urban planning, sorry. And uh, sometimes if it's not a case of lack of resources, it's a case of time, it's a case of notifying uh, the procedure and sharing the information with the citizens in, that case, in this case. And this is the main difference between participation and knowing or um, sharing the legal procedures. Of course, we need to take into account the legal framework. We cannot just ignore it at all. We need it. We need to follow it. Then the other solution that we can um, implement, it's a forecasting and coming up with a plan B, which means taking into account the citizens participation. And across the Spain, we have a lot of examples of councils and communities that forecast the citizens participation. That is the Canary Islands, Valencia, Catalonia, a, you know, Malaga. And I I just don't want to mess anyone out and I don't want anybody to feel like I'm not mentioning their heart and very supportive work. All of them, eh, they have eh, come up with their own mechanism to cope with this massive delays and allegations. And eh, for example, Andalusia or Madrid, they already have those procedures that kind of forecast. Uh, and sorry, Sid, uh, we have a few hands. Uh, I'm guessing they want to ask you something uh, about what you are just talking about right now, or maybe something that you mentioned before. Um, but I'm just going to give the floor to Andres. So please, Andres, go ahead. Sorry, Andres, you, you had your hand. Ah, okay, no, he's saying that. Okay, okay, never mind. Okay, then in this case, I'm just gonna read the comments. 
if one says in Bolivia we do have a control social control that basically follows the constitutional right in the country and has a takes into account the participation and the decision makers are very important and are part of this uh, management. Well, Esther, I'm going to leave it to you, but just to to give another point, uh, tomorrow I'm in a meeting where we're going to talk about human agenda. What do I mean by that? It's basically a session that includes the urban planning into the agenda. And we're not going to go into details about planning. We're just going to talk about how participation is contemplated. It is seen uh, from the institution's point of view and how this translates into citizens participating on a higher average when it comes to legal stuff and legal procedures. And for me, the, the, the important thing here is how the institutions collaborate together with the citizens with the citizens and how this somehow has a very deep root and very deep um, commitment from both sides and and uh, this collaboration this communication between both parts establishes a mechanism that helps the institutions and the organizations to know more about their citizens, about what their citizens think about the cities, about the population, about the national utilities and so on. So I think this is important and we have to talk about it because somehow it canalizes the participation. And you know, um, I think this is a gaining territory and it is gaining definitely importance in Spain and in Spain's agenda from the government. I don't know about the other countries, but hold on, if we are receiving more information about other countries, for example, in Guadalajara, Mexico, three months ago, there was a huge uh, dialogue, a huge discuss, discuss with the Lopez Mateo and uh, one of the organizations to uh, kind of make the statuses more transitable for the for the citizens, and that leads to decision makers to be more present and to have a bigger voice. Uh, I think you're highlighting a very important point because that means that the developers, that the human institutions, they are incorporating and they are uh, allowing participants and citizens to participate and have a bigger presence when it comes to those discussions. I think um, what they are all highlighting is very important. I think we have to be present and in different, uh, different uh, topics and different departments, and we have to have a big and deeper voice uh, to allow people to participate in the legal procedures and also the human planning. Because if the law doesn't allow citizens to participate on those public matters, on those state decisions, and then the decision makers are not allowing everybody to feel included. And, you know, there's no improvement from there. I and mean, then, from my point of view, there is a lack of participation culture. What do I mean by participation culture? Just a people wanting to be more involved. Sorry, I, I can wait to ask to, to throw my question. 
But um, this is a very, very, very interesting discussion. I am missing my urban uh, department colleagues, but here from Madrid, we do have a lot of participation and there is information distributed and disseminated to the public. But when it comes to the procedures, uh, when when you're tossing an application, there is a huge, massive list of observation that the citizen comes across. And um, I think we, we also say, no, 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 it is important to inform the citizens and then they know how to act. But I think this is just bonkers, it's, it's wrong, because it's a huge procedure, it's a massive, um, a massive, document paper, there's a lot of uh, laws to take into account. And, and then uh, sometimes as well, uh, at least in Madrid, we have uh, two different organs. One that works for early urban planning, and then another department that works with external organization and decision makers, universities, lecturers and so on and we've been establishing a different a discussions um about how we can uh, how we can uh, foster how we can promote the improvement of the economical situation the city because by coming up with your urban planning then we are activating the potential economic resources of the city. And at least uh, in Madrid, I can say that we do have a lot of projects on the table that we do try to integrate and to make everybody feel good and everybody feel uh, included and uh, again i would like to highlight uh, the importance of uh, asking people to be more involved but not only that as well sharing the information the correct information to them and make sure that all the citizens know the articles of the law and the constitution and you know there's a lot of faff going around a lot of people that talks about the topic without being uh, experts on it sorry Esther, i have another question for you when you talk about the autonomic legislations in spain and participation what are the legal consequences or the ble uh, blending consequences uh, when it comes to the lack of um, participation and the lack of doing things? Um, is it just only a voluntary and non-compulsory procedure or just a, remains like a blending, blending contract? Or could you just clarify on that, please? Thank you. Yes, no problem. I'm just going to try to answer all your questions. I think uh, regarding the four questions, I totally agree with you. It wasn't more a question, it was just a statement. But yeah, again, I totally agree. I think we have to be flexible and open minded in this sense because. When I was uh, saying before, it just doesn't matter really the information we give to the citizens because uh, when you're drawing up a urban plan and then it goes to the court and they have to prove it, you've already done it. And you have keep, come up with this plan uh, in terms of and following the features of your city at the moment. But I think participation from the citizens is just fundamental, is very important. Just to give you an example, when we draw up a plan and this plan just results approved, um, then we have to inform the citizens see what's going to happen. 
we and uh, we, we we have to be self aware and realize that we are very slow in approving and coming up with ideas. And it's just to be frustrating sometimes as well because we keep asking for public state and citizens' participation. But how do we kind of encourage them to participate? How do we make sure they want to participate and they want to know more about our projects? Um, but going back to the second question, um, no, it wouldn't be a case of a blinding procedure. It would be a case of Mm, there's no law of legal consequences. Uh, we are advancing on that. And uh, I'm just talking of the cases that I know from the first hand. And for example, I think there's a very well known case across Spain uh, that we had some plan going on in Marbella and it got nulled. Uh, then we had to redo it again, and uh, now it's been approved, and it's just uh, taking place very soon. And that was thanks to the council and the high participation that the project received. And, you know, it was just a, a model that was kind of fostering people to be more involved, to look after their city, to basically reconstruct and remodelate uh, how the city works uh, for their citizens, its citizens. And yes, again, I think we are very slow when it comes to accepting, to approve and everything else, but we are under, we are, uh, on the right track, and we are doing things. Yeah, I don't know if I have answered your question, uh, Marta. Yeah, I think you have, because sometimes, you know, it's not about being willing or doing things, it's about getting things done, because we talk a lot and we come up with a lot of ideas, but at the end of the day, if those ideas and those thoughts, don't, they don't, uh, you know, uh, they're not written down and they're not implementing, they are only that. Um, I also have another question, if, may, if I may ask Esther. I am Luis. Uh, Esther, you keep saying that the participation is improving and my observation would be, well, could it have been worse? Uh, and you know, sometimes we just think, oh, yeah, this thing is improving, but the reality is that it couldn't be worse. So what what, what do you think about this? Say, what example would you give us? How do you think participation could have a negative impact? And if so, could you give us examples? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely no problem at all. Yeah, and also, guys, this is an open mic uh, session. Please feel free to intervene and cut me off anytime. I think um, most of the time um, we, we think uh, the legal procedures are something very slow. And, you know, on our daily basis, we, not, we, we need to contact an administration and we need to contact uh, state public sectors. And and uh, yeah, we, 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 we see how those public organizations and administrations, they communicate the information to their citizens. And how could the business, it could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been worse, but um, the thing is, it is improving because there is more information going on around. And it could be worse in the sense of things are not getting done at all, or the our projects are not generating enough interest. I don't know. And I think uh, the project has both uh, good and bad things, as everything. And then I would like to highlight the lack of culture uh, when it comes to being informed, because I think there's no a lot of people informing. Uh, people don't know their rights. 
uh, people don't know what they can do to contribute their cities and you know i think uh, and it's impossible to have a homogene uh, experience and model but at the same time i think it, it is good to have a general idea and to make uh, people feel uh, that um, they can do something and they can contribute. Uh, then I also think that people should have access to the information from a real perspective. And I think sometimes people get put off uh, participating because of the lack of information. So I think it is important to have this culture. I think Luis is very, very important. I think your observation. For example, uh, the big new house, or whatever you want to call it. And just to give you an example, uh, one of my students, he's doing a dissertation about uh, the situation and logistics in Alcorcón. Uh, Alcorcón is a county very far away from the city centre. And this student is analysing the perimeter, the, 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 the land of this, the, the less county, and how this can be transformed and applicable to Madrid. And I think I'm not exaggerating uh, when I say that our country is acting the same way, for example, as, Ch as China. We have this mentality of let's make things bigger, let's make things massive, let's get up a huge amount of uh, eggs and make sure that we get up everything. And I think this is a very serious and very light uh, line to cross uh, because when it comes to just keep constructing and keep tossing buildings around the country uh, from the citizen sport point of view it doesn't make sense at all and for example there are there are a lot of people complaining that maybe 50 years ago, there was a massive soil and a, um, a massive land full of trees and nature next to their house, and now it's just been replaced with houses. And this mentality that we have in Spain, I think, is not common at all across other countries in Europe. It's more common in China. And I think I'm not just dating again. So I think that the legal uh, procedures and the constitution at the moment doesn't uh, gather the importance of participation and somehow it's not our fault that the plans are being nude it's not our fault that the court keep it, keeps getting back to us and the reason why the court keeps uh, coming back to us with a negative result is because we're lacking environmental plans, environmental measures, environmental procedures, and we're overlooking at all these facts that are very important right now. So for me, when I get back, when I get a response back from the court and it's negative, I'm like, okay, let's analyze why the court thinks the way it is. And sometimes uh, you have a paradise, a green space area that is going to be absolutely destroyed by a bunch of buildings and people do not understand this. And I think that's the reason why we're in constant conflict with the uh, developers and the citizens 
why is the reason uh, or why is the economical reason behind all this? Why are the citizens not involved? Why people think that constructing building is that bad? And when we analyze all these topics, when we analyze all these issues, then we have a clear answer of why we cannot exist without the citizens. If I wanted to build a bridge and in the end we put an escalator, then obviously the participation is going to be hindered. But in this conflict, which I think is the passionate part of the urbanists, how can we translate this to the participation area and how can facilitate this the final result. And not only see the improvements at the end, but just to avoid that at least it doesn't move forward the project. I don't know what you think about that. I do agree with you, it's just that I didn't want to interrupt. But I think this is not only for urban planning, but in general, for the participation, we can translate these everywhere. Because sometimes we can see really simple questions when they formulate them, and it seems that it's not something important. Because from the upper levels, sometimes they say that we need to explain these in a plain language, and through this process, something gets lost in the way. And of course, people and citizens, they need to uh, protest and say, I want here this tree or I need this here. But we need to simplify this process because maybe we do not know that much about the urbanism, about the urban planning, and it can be really boring. So if they uh, create these forms and they are really in a technical vocabulary, it might uh, hinder the participatory process. And sorry that I interrupt you, not, not at all, uh, because we are here for that, so thank you. I also wanted to say something, just it will be brief, but it's a question that I think is the core of the participation. And so I think it goes uh, not only for urban planning, but in all the regulations about the pros and cons of the participation. But what are the problems of those that are against that? Obviously, I would say the cost and how this increases. Also, that the uh, decisions take longer when they are making them. And also, because here maybe we are underlying the individual um, uh, interest, not the general one. So not all that are participating represent the general interest because we would need to ask everyone in the population to validate this and to make it a legitimate process. And sometimes there are some citizens that they participate, but they are not constant and they get tired of participating and we cannot ask them to be consistent. So there are different arguments in that sense that opening these debates or giving that hand and these spaces for the citizens to participate are not that good for the final decision. So what do we need to do? I think we need to find a balance. I need to th uh, we need to do the urban planning and find the, the way of participation of the citizens in a different ways. There are so many workshops, there are so many ways that we can do it and not all of them are valid. So we need to adapt them for each case. And I think that's the key of success. We need to find the mechanism, the uh, duration, what's the moment that we are living, what's the tool that we are using. Because if we do not contemplate all this context, it might create uh, participatory fatigue, that, as we were saying, and then the citizens are not willing to participate. And I think that's the key uh, for this debate. 
Thank you so much. That's what I wanted to say. Antonio? Yes, what I wanted to say, first of all, is uh, I really like this question. I think it's fantastic. And I think the problem here is to give some power that we do not have for the citizens. Because afterwards, maybe there is a lobby, a society, an association, a company. It can be any stakeholder that have the final decision if they intervene. So together with the uh, citizen participation, we need to have a legal technique with quality in order to avoid these kind of problems. And the second key point that we, uh, we have here is the new design of the city. I think that here we have two different scales. How are we going to create a new city? Here we have a vision and a strategy plan. We need to take into account many things such as new industries, new spaces that are going to be there in the long run. As you know, in, in most of the cities, we can have a, an old city town. It doesn't need to be here in Madrid. It can be in another city, but we have different neighborhoods. So in these definitions of the cities, what happens after when they are doing the urban planning? Because it doesn't seem that afterwards we are going to be that effective. So I think that's a limitation. The second one is this one. The first one was to give uh, that power to the citizens that they actually do not have. There is always some people or some stakeholders that can interfere. And if the process is not correct, then that decision that the citizen made is not going to take place. And then the point of the, con the, of the construction of the environment, as we were mentioning before in Alconcon, we are talking about uh, urban planning as big that it will create a, an, a boost. But we also need to think and to debate within uh, important architects, important urban plannings to have uh, many aspects into consideration. Thank you so much. Now we are all quiet, but I would like to highlight that we also need to defend the, the public um, interest from those lobbies or those uh, groups that are trying to, to put first their own intentions and their own interest. And we need to explain why we took this decision that it was not something random. And so we can give voice to, to those minorities. I know this sounds really poetic, but it is like, like this. Esther, I'm not sure if you're here. Can you hear me? Can you see me? <laughs> we do not let you talk in the end. No, but I actually agree with all what you mentioned. And as Susana was mentioning, how important it is that the process is legitimate and that we educate the citizens to participate. There is a effective participation, not just uh, a random process of participating. We need to teach, to educate the citizens and not thinking in a particular level, but at a general, general level. And I think this is crucial. And I, I'm proactive in that way, I think, since the very beginning, even for the children, we need to educate in that sense, such as with the urban agenda. Now we have a document 
and it's focused for the children, like for primary school more or less. And so at that early stage, they can understand and learn how the city, same way as their own house and their toys, belong to them. So those parks and those trees and their, the streets belong to them. So in that way, it's how we can educate the citizens to participate. And in this way, it won't be something dull and slow and a bureaucratic process, and it will be an effective uh, participation process that will add value. That's the end that we want. We have seen this bureaucratic process, but we also have other regulations, and this is not something new. And with the new technologies, we have websites. So we have so many tools to promote and boost this uh, process. Like, for instance, today, most of, of you, you are in Madrid, but some are in other places. And it doesn't matter. We have so many ways of doing this, and we can do it. What we cannot do is to uh, change this process and that in the end, uh, the participation doesn't meet its end. I, I'm going to share with you the, the guidelines that Esther was mentioning for children, and here you have it in the chat, the urban agenda. Thank you so much, Luis. It is really interesting, I promise. In fact, we had a radio show about this urban agenda because this has been a pedagogic tool for participation. And this is really interesting, I believe. I'm working right now with this and we maybe we can do a workshop about this. But the process that we have been seeing through this urban agenda are more participative because the administrations that are boosting these know that these agendas are so broad. So those are strategic plans. And it's like if we are asking Santa for our gifts in Christmas because in this way we are approaching to the community or at a local level when they open this participation process when they know the result is going to be an uh, urban agenda that are just guidelines and not an implemented regulation however with the regulations that are more strict in the urban planning area when we are talking about the regulations and the legal effects that it has that's important and as i was saying yesterday in a debate that i participated we were mentioning how can we uh, do the urban planning something more flexible how can it be more agile well is something that we can boost from the uh, citizens, but we need to change our way of thinking. We need to create a new way of planning. So here we, we can see that with participation, it happens kind of the same. The processes are easier when the results that we are going to obtain are not binding for the administrations that are providing them, because in that way, they feel free to have all those opinions, knowing that it has not legal consequences. And something to take into account is that something that from a legal perspective, 
we could say, yeah, well, if it's not blinding, what happens? What do we do with this? But in some sense, in uh, in a legal context in, in Spain, boosting these processes through the urban planning can help to the citizens to participate. So it has that uh, double reading, double meaning, and I think it is interesting. And as Susana mentioned before, there is not a secret recipe. We need to find the balance. Each process, each loca locality and municipality have their own way of proceeding, and they should find their own methods to adapt to the circumstances. And I do not know, Esther, if you would like to give like the final pill and the final example, because I think we could keep talking about these for hours. And I know that before it was a little dense in a legal sense, but I think we also do need to know about these, face this legal reality, because sometimes it's the, the, this legal reality, the one that limits us. And finally, I see here Juan, because I've seen that he's been here, but he wouldn't say anything. So that was something curious. Okay, go ahead, Joan. I give you the floor. I cannot hear you. There you go. I don't want to wrap up, but I wanted to thank you for, to the participatory group to invite me here today. And I want to say that I'm really happy to e-meet Esther because uh, I've been working on something based on your work. So I will comment this on you with you on Cyber. But I need to say that this debate was interesting. And I would like to highlight two key points that we mentioned today. Marta mentioned the uh, conflict that we can find in urban planning. And one is that we are willing to receive and to learn bad news. And I think that's important, especially in extreme situations when we have different values and opinions amongst the technicians, the citizens, and of course, that's, go that's going to happen. But regarding the question that we were asking before is, is it this something that improves or hinders the process? Well, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a case that the participation hinder the process, but it's been a long time now, and it was something urgent. And obviously, back then, there were not the same mechanisms. It is true that we had some um, voting at a local level, and to sum up, they were trying to uh, build a big city. And before you mentioned Alcorcón, so this case uh, came to my mind. And uh, I'm talking about Gallex in close by to Barcelona. And it has some natural interest. So the plan was moving forward. And there was kind of a social mobilization. It was not legal, but uh, first it was a social movement and then it came a little uh, legal. But in that moment, it was not uh, legal. In... And not long ago, I read an article uh, from a well-known architect that was defending the initial plan the plan, uh, I must say, that it did not move forward. It started, but then uh, there was uh, some hippies living around. But that architect said that the ones that were promoting that planning, 
were one of the best technicians at a European level. And the solution that they were going to implement, it was going to be uh, much better in 40 years. It was going to be a, a, an improved society. And he was saying, and in that moment, it was, uh, it was not the perfect participation. But I think about it, and I think it's a pity, because if that initial plan would have moved forward, then the results, it would have been good for that area. And then I also wanted to talk about the scale when the participation works well, but what happens when we are looking to the future? Because if we have a problem at a local level, if we are talking about how to build or where to put this, the stairs, that's not a big uh, problem and that is something that the citizen can have voice about. But if we are talking about bigger projects as in Alcorcón, then we can have uh, technical problems. And in that case, the citizen participation can hinder the urban planning because the, par the citizens may not have that uh, technical vision. And now I let you the floor, Esther. As you can see, what we can put on the table is that as we are from Madrid, I'm sure that you are at the beach. We are at the beach and those that are in Madrid are not. So that's something that we can tease them about. It is a pleasure. Uh, the same for me to meet you and to share this, to talk with you and to exchange uh, our views. It is really a pleasure. And to learn about all those experiences. I don't know if you have any other questions or comments. Luis was mentioning that the participation can hinder if the citizens are defending their own interests. Please, if you could share that uh, article that you were mentioning about the architect. Uh, now I think, Esther, what do you think if we can wrap up? I think this is a really dense topic and we can have different views. And from this workshop, we can even create another uh, workshop as it happens with the weddings. And if I'm not mistaken, Luis, this might be the last workshop before summer. Well, for the experts, yes, we also have one uh, table with the experts. Uh, but it's in Petit Comité, and that should be on the 29th, but we will share the information with you. And it will be with the uh, Portugal office for the participation. And we will try to debate about this process and what they are learning about this, about this topic. And that will be the last uh, activity before summer. So in that case, we are going to wrap up now. And thank you so much again. It's been a success, this workshop, to be honest. It has been quite intense. Thank you so much, Esther, to be willing to, to be here with us. And as you know, um, we can see the recording. And we try to uh, part, uh, invite all those value, valuable people that can come and share the, their vision with us. And you will see, for instance, we tested um, something that we recorded, and I think you will have it next week. We don't have it yet, but we, we are working on it. And we are trying to dose these um, talks, but surely you will have it. And also, for those that are connected here, if you have any specific or interesting case that you would like to share with us, 
we can even meet before, we can talk about this specific case, and we can compare our visions, cases that improve, cases that uh, got worse, because in this way we can implement to the participatory group how do we organize, what activities can we do, and also it can be uh, a platform for you to so we can listen to you and we can get to know you. So once again, thank you so much to everyone to be here. Antonia, Susana, Marta, Luis, Cristina, Joan, I was missing you. Uh, and actually it was my fault because I didn't share with you the the link. And thank you so much to everyone that was here today. Thank you so much, everyone. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Adios, adios, adios. 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 Adios.